Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Wednesday. I hope that your day is off to a good start and I hope that your week is off to a good start too. So today, as I promised from before, I am going to finish reading chapter five from Goonie Bird Green. So if you remember from my last video, I started this chapter and today I'm going to finish it. However, we don't have a ton of it left, um, but this is something that I'm gonna keep incorporating. So even if we don't read a lot today, probably I'm gonna be doing this for a lot of videos in the future. So if you remember from before, um, Goonie Bird was telling the story about when she directed the orchestra. So she was late to school and she told her class that it's because she was directing the orchestra. So of course her class wanted her to tell the story or explain how she was directing an orchestra. And so then she told the story about how the bus was lost and she had to tell them where to go so that they could get to their show in time. So she just finished telling that story. So now I'm gonna pick up where we left off to finish the chapter. Questions, anyone? Goonie Bird asked. Was there a drum player? Malcolm asked. Yes, Goonie Bird said. Every single part of a symp symphony orchestra was there, even a harp. Oh, Malcolm said, sighing. I wish I could have seen the drum player. I love drums. You will, Goonie Bird said. Was there a flute player? Chelsea asked. Two, Goonie Bird said. I wish I could hear the flute players, Chelsea said. You will, Goonie Bird said. I have a question, Goonie Bird, Mrs. Pigeon said. What was it that you whispered to the trombone player? Secret, Goonie Bird said, but you'll find out at 12 o'clock sharp. That's lunchtime, Mrs. Pigeon pointed out. Precisely, Goonie Bird said. Now, shall we turn to our social studies? All morning, the children and Mrs. Pigeon, too, glanced again and again at the big clock on the wall. They did social studies and arithmetic and had a snack in the middle of the morning. Then they did reading and art. Finally, just as the clock hands moved to 12 o'clock and the second graders were about to reach for their lunch boxes, Goonie Bird announced, here they are. She pointed to the large window on the side of the classroom. The children all stood up and watched, though the windows as, or I'm sorry, watched through the windows as a red and white bus pulled up and parked. When the door of the bus opened, the orchestra players came out one by one holding their instruments. They arranged themselves in a semicircle on the lawn, facing the Water Tower Elementary School. The conductor, holding a baton, stepped to the center and lifted his arms. Too bad he doesn't have long black gloves, Goonie Bird murmured. Mrs. Pigeon opened the window so that they could hear better. The orchestra began to play a slow, stately melody. When it finished, the conductor bowed. Then he turned to the windows and explained, that was a serenade. It's a kind of dance. We'll play it one more time in honor of Goonie Bird Green. So the orchestra played the short serenade again and the children danced around the classroom in a very serious and graceful way. And that is the end of chapter five. So in my next video, I will start reading chapter six. And in my next video, I'm gonna have a special guest who is going to help me read chapter six. But for today, I have another book that I would love to read to you all. It is called, Howard B. Wigglebottom learns about sportsmanship. Winning isn't everything. Here is the cover. So as you can see, he's playing basketball. This is Howard. And this is a scholastic book. The reason that I chose this book is because my family recently got a basketball hoop in um, on our driveway and we have been playing a ton of basketball. Um, since all of us or most of us are home right now. So that's why I chose this book because it has basketball on the cover. So let's get started to learn about sportsmanship. Howard B. Wigglebottom didn't like to lose. He just had to be the best at everything. At the fair, 
Howard won the seed spitting contest. He won the sledgehammer and pie eating contests. So here you can see him spitting seeds. And over here, the pie eating contest and the sledgehammer contest. He won the skateboard, pogo stick, and dunk the clown contests. As long as Howard came in first, he was happy. But no one can come in first. Every time in everything. Ooh. Once, when Howard came in second, he threw a temper tantrum and kicked his second place trophy. So here's him kicking his trophy. And on this picture, you can see his toe really hurts. Howard even cheated friends to win. When his soccer team made it to the finals, he told himself that coming in second is not okay. Winning meant everything. He was going to see it. He was going to see to it that his team won. When the big day arrived, Howard yelled at his teammates if they made mistakes. He was a ball hog and wouldn't share. Howard tripped a player on the other team just as he was about to score a goal. Then he talked back to his coach. Time out, Howard. Howard called the other team's players bad names. He was taken out of the game. Howard, this is not okay, said the coach. You need to learn about sportsmanship and being a team player. You are making poor choices and don't deserve to play. Howard was the captain of the team and the best player. Coach, the team needs me to win. Please put me back in, he begged. The coach shook his head and said, sometimes there are more important things than winning. Not for Howard. They'll lose without me and the coach will be sorry, he thought. Howard watched his teammates t cheer each other on. They treated the coaches, referees, and each other with respect. An upset dad was yelling at the referee. Howard watched as the man was asked to leave. Do I look like that? He thought to himself. In a flash, he understood how badly he had been behaving. He felt so embarrassed and ashamed. Please coach, I don't want to be like that dad, said Howard. Please put me back in. I don't want to let the team down. The coach nodded and Howard ran to join his teammates. The score was tied with one minute to go. The crowd was cheering. Howard had the ball and a chance to score the winning goal. And he stopped. So this is a picture of the angry dad. Instead, he passed to a teammate who took the shot and missed. Then the other team got the ball and scored the winning goal. Howard's team lost. After the game, Howard proudly accepted his team's second place trophy. He smiled and shook hands with the captain of the winning team. Good job. With a wink, he said, we'll get you next time. Howard, you can be very proud of yourself today, said his coach. You learned about sportsmanship and were a good team player. Howard was very happy. This second place trophy meant more to him than all his other winning trophies put together.
the end. So I don't know about you guys, but I really like that book. I think that it teaches us the importance of sportsmanship. So sportsmanship means being fair and treating other people with respect. And as you can see from our story, winning is not always the most important thing. So I like to win when I'm playing different games, whether it's a board game or a sports game like Howard or anything else. But winning is not always the most important thing. We need to make sure that we're being fair and that we're treating other people with respect. Okay, so that is all for today. I would love it if you guys would comment on this video and tell me some of the things that you have been doing at home during this time where we're not in school and we don't see each other all the time. I would love to know what you've been keeping yourself busy with. So maybe you've been playing outside a lot. Maybe you've been reading a lot of books or playing games with your family. I would love for you to tell me some of the things that you have been doing. So as I said in my next video, I'm going to have a special guest and something else for you to look forward to, um, probably next week or the week after, you can be checking your mailboxes and looking for something that is from me. So not this week probably, but next week or the week after. Make sure you keep an eye out. Um, so when your parents get the mail each day, ask them if there's anything for you in there because you should be getting something soon. All right, I hope that you all have a wonderful day today and I will see you next time.